Now we go on to chapter 7. Safety in the ark. Then the Lord said to Noah, Come into the ark, you and your household, because I have seen that you all are righteous. Is it? Because I have seen that you, the original word is singular, and that was referring to who? Noah. Come, you and your household come into the, the ark, because I have seen that you are righteous. God will hold the head of the household responsible. Even Eve succumbed to the temptation of the serpent. But who did God hold responsible for? Adam. Okay? So, again I stress, as the head of your household, you ought to be yeah, righteous. But before that, I want to highlight the word come. Come into the ark. Do you know this is the first time the word come appeared in the Bible? And it, uh, and it will appear a few more times in the Bible. It is so consistent. Come. Come. What is that? It is an invitation. God is a great host. He always likes to invite. Say come. And if you read Isaiah, he said what? Come, let us reason together. Remember that verse? Come, let us reason together. Hey, he is God, no? He is the creator. Why does he need to reason with you? He doesn't even need to explain to you. You follow me? It is by his grace. He said, come. In the New Testament, Jesus said, Come to me, all those who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It is so comforting to know that I can come to my Father, to my God, my Lord and my Savior, because it is an open invitation. It is only for me to reject. But if I don't reject, I accept, I can come. And you go all the way to Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. From the first book to the last book, it is come. So, Revelation 22. Verse 17. As the, as the author, the Apostle John comes to the end of the book of Revelation and he wrote in verse 17, And the Spirit and the Bride say, say Come, let him who hears say, Come, and let him who is thirsty come, whoever desires, let him take the water of life freely. Even in the last book, in the last chapter of the Bible, the invitation is still open. Come. Come and take the water, the living water, freely. So, our God is long-suffering. He is patient. Why? Because He is love. It is not about love. He is love. It is agape. Yeah? He desires that no one perish, but all should come to everlasting life. So from the first book, to the Old Testament, to the New Testament, to the last book, come. So don't reject him. But later on, after come, got go. Yeah, I'll show you. Because some people just come, come and sit and enjoy the message, enjoy the thing, enjoy everything uh, that the church gives, but never go. Okay? We need workers, we need you to go. Come into the ark, you and your household, because I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. You shall take with you seven, each of every clean animal. So, clean animals or unclean animals. So, clean animals, seven. Okay. Unclean animals, you shall take with you seven each of every clean animal, a male and a female. 
and to each of animals that are unclean a male and his female now at this point in time at this point in time no description was made what is clean and what is unclean it was only in in the in the uh, announcement of the law when Moses was given instructions from God then he was told what are the clean animals and what are unclean animals that you should not eat example the pig is clean or unclean unclean you eat chasil okay so this one is two male and female now this one is two plus two plus two plus one why the plus one why the plus one for offering for offering which we will look at after the flood the one is for offering so and you know our friend Noah didn't have to go and hunt for them okay they will come on their own as directed by God so seven clean two unclean the one here is for offering in the form of a sacrifice and also seven verse 3 and also seven each of the birds of the air male and female to keep the species alive on the face of all the earth for after seven more days I will cause it to rain on the earth forty days and forty nights and I will destroy from the face of the earth all living things that I have made and Noah did according to all that the Lord commanded him again is all obedience Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters were on the earth now later I'm going to draw a line, a timeline because uh, we need to understand so Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters were on the earth verse 7 so Noah with his sons his wife and his sons wives went into the ark because of the waters of the flood of clean animals of animals that are unclean of birds and everything that creep on the earth two by two they went into the ark to Noah they went to Noah as was told by God to him in chapter 6 that they will come to you indeed they went to Noah male and female as God had commanded wow this is like kindergarten uh, two by two unity harmony no fighting yeah orderly queue up and he came now this speaks of the unity in the kingdom unity in the kingdom when we shall all appear before him believers in the kingdom of god we will not be like rushing for the train you know mrt train open and we all chong in or chong out i don't know what and then we clash each other but when we enter into god's kingdom we will be like them there will be unity there will be orderly and it came to pass after seven days that the waters of the flood were on the earth in the 600 year of Noah's life 600 year of Noah's life in the second month the 17th day of the month okay 600 okay so this is the first month this is the second month and this is the 17th day okay This will make it easier for you. Otherwise, as you read, uh, 600 days, 14 days, 17 days, which month, and so on. Okay. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, 
the 17th day of that month, of the second month, on that day, all the fountains of the great deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. So where did the water come from? Okay, you turn to Genesis chapter 1. For the, for the benefit of my friend, huh? we go back to chapter 1. Eh? Chapter 1 verse 6. Then God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Now, this is the earth. Okay? And when God created, it was water covered. Okay? Water. <laughs> Suya, Suya. Uh, okay. Then God said, Let there be a firmament. Okay. Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Let it let there be a firmament. Let it divide the waters from the waters. Okay, so this one becomes the ocean, the sea, and so on, and this one is up there. Where we divide the waters which were, then God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. Okay, so this God called it heaven, he separated the waters below the firmament and the waters above. Now, we turn back to Genesis chapter 6, chapter 7, reading verse 11. On that day, all the, all the fountains of the great deep were broken up. So, where did the water come from? Underneath underneath okay fountains from the great deep were open up broken up and the windows were of heaven were open and then where also did the rain come from on top should die one so now we read again on that day all the fountains of the great deep were broken up and all the wind and the windows of heaven were open and the rain was on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. So that's where the water came from. Okay? But I'm very sure, I'm very sure that wasn't God's intention when he did that. But because he wanted to erase all the evil and start again, so that was where the water came from. And the number 40 is... Uh, sort of a judgment because the the other occasion when the when the number 40 was used was they were 40 years in the desert in the wilderness why because they were gossiping and grumbling ungrateful yeah so don't be gossiping grumbling and ungrateful you spent 40 years in the wilderness <coughs> verse 13 now verse 13 is also a little bit of repeat of what happened in the last few verses. On the very same day, Noah and Noah's son, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Noah's wife, wife, wife and the three wives of his sons with them, entered the ark. So you wonder now, why they wait until the last day, last day, on the day that it's going to rain, then they enter in. Don't be anxious. Yeah, don't be anxious. God will, will have his time. Yeah, they calmly, when it's time, they went in. Don't be careful. <clears throat> Verse 14. They and every beast after its kind, all cattle after their kind, every creeping thing that creeps 
on the earth after its kind, and every bird after its kind, every bird of every sort. And they went into the ark to Noah, again, to Noah. They know who is the boss. Two by two of all flesh, which is in which is the breath of life. Again, you underline breath of life. Just now we, we, we underlined earlier in chapter 6, breath of life. So all these birds and animals, they went to Noah. These are the ones which had the breath of life. So those that entered, male and female, of all flesh, went in as God had commanded him. And the Lord shut him in. And the Lord shut him in. I, 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 I have wiped, I erased that diagram, but... Uh, did, did uh, Adam, uh, did Noah lock from inside? Uh? He just went in and the Lord shut from outside. In. Which place do you go where they lock from the outside? Prison! <laughs> right. You go prison, uh, you don't lock from inside, they lock from outside. <laughs> So I tell you, Noah and his family, especially Noah, he must have got lots of faith. First, you ask me to build this thing, you ask me to go in, yeah, and then I go in, I cannot control the lock, but you control the lock. I really have to put my life and everything, my hope, my trust in you. Why? Salvation is the Lord's. I cannot save myself. Yeah. He, only He can save me. Salvation is the Lord's. So we are secure and safe in His salvation. And the Lord shut Him in. And they must stay in in order to be safe. Do we have a New Testament comparison for this? Do we have? Huh? No. Do you remember in the book of Acts, Paul, he was on the ship, then the storm, and they wanted to wow, shipwreck, and they wanted to jump and escape. Okay, you turn to Acts 27, verse 23. Acts 27. 2, 7, 2, 3. Here is the description, the record of the storm at sea. And in verse 23 of chapter 27. Okay, anyway, let me read uh, verse 22. The people were panicking. The people were panicking. Yeah. And now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. All lives will be saved, but the ship will be destroyed. That's what Paul was saying, and it's prophetic, because it hasn't happened yet. But, For there stood by me this night an angel of the Lord, of who, to whom I belong, whom I serve. Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar, and indeed God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore take heart, man, for I believe that God, uh, believe God that it will be just as it was told me, however, we must run aground on certain island. So what was Paul saying? Please don't jump ship. Please stay in the ship. Right? The ship will go aground, but you will be saved. Because God said, Paul, you must go and see Caesar. So you and all those with you. So all of you will be saved. And then you jump all the way to verse 44. Verse 44. By now, the ship was already, was already wrecked on the island of Malta. But Acts chapter 27, verse 44. And the rest, some on boards and some on parts of the ship. And so it was that they all escaped safely to land. You follow me? So Paul told them, please don't jump ship. Please don't. 
yeah, you will all be saved, the boat will be uh, wrecked, but you'll be saved. And finally, when the when they hit the island, yeah, they survived by clinging on to boards and whatever, but they all got safely to the land. But they who were on the ship were saved. So what is the lesson here? You are in the ark of salvation. Stay in the ark of salvation. Yeah. And remain safe. God promised that we will reach the harbor. If you go to those uh, funeral wake, we always sing uh, uh, on the others. What is that? Say, what's that song? Ah, uh, reach the other shore. God promised that we will reach the other shore. We will reach the harbor, but He never promised you there will be no storms in your life. You follow me? Along your journey, there will be storms, but hang on. So you get into the ark, remain in the ark, and stay safe. But some people say, oh, once safe, always safe. If you remain in the ark, God will not stop you if you decide to jump out the window. If ark decide to, no, if no one decide to open the window and, and jump out, goodbye. Or any of his family members jump out the, the window, it's over. Because the window wasn't locked. Later you'll see, no one will open the window. Okay? But the door was shut. But if you remain in, you are safe. Okay? So stay safe. Now the flood was on the earth. Back to chapter 7, verse 17. Now the flood was on the earth 40 days. The waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. <clears throat> the waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth, and all the high hills under the whole heavens were covered. So Bukitima Hill also covered. <laughs> okay? The waters prevailed 15 cubics upwards. 23 feet, huh? 15 cubics. Yeah, you take 15 times 18 inches, it's about 23 feet. And the mountains were covered. Himalayans, Everest, all covered. And all flesh died that move on the earth birds and cattle and bees and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth and every man all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life all that was on the dry land so just now I ask you to underline breath of life now you underline breath of the spirit of life what is the difference? What is the difference? This is about man. Just now, breath of life was used to describe those animals that went into the ark. Now, it is being used to describe all those that did not survive the flood, those who are outside the ark. So all the, all the animals, I mean only two women were of each tribe. The, the, the rest were outside. So all the animals, outside the ark all died and every man verse 21 the last part of verse 21 and every man and he went on to describe further who are they in all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life that means every man who was not in the ark died you follow me so we are spirit men. We have this, the spirit within us. Verse 23. So, he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both men and cattle, creeping thing and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remain alive that is the ark of salvation and the waters prevail on the earth 
150 days. 150 days. So, if we take if we take one month to be about 30 days, so we have five months. So this is the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. So the water prevailed 150 days. Okay? But it rained for 40 days. Now, up to now, it's been what? 150 days since they went in. Has God spoken to him again? 150 days is almost like uh, yeah, five months. It's a long time. Yeah. First, you asked me to build the thing. Then you say, go in. And I went in. And then it's been raining cats and dogs. And then, now, rainstorm. They're still just sitting around in a boat, not in a barge, you know, looking at all the animals, looking at your wife and your, your in-laws and so on. But no word from God. We will go further into chapter 8 and then you will see how long they stayed in the boat. And how long, much later, then did God speak to him again. Sometimes we hear from God and we want answers. We want immediate answers. We want to always get word from God. What to do next, what to eat, what to this and that. Sometimes God gives you a word, but there, there is a time to wait. Okay? Don't be impatient. 